Hi, it's Dana of Days Crochet, and today I'm going to teach you how to accessorize your crochet bag. So if you are following me for my crochet bags, whether it be on Facebook, Instagram, or just on YouTube, you will have seen the bobble bag. Um, if you are a part of my Facebook group, I have also given a tutorial on the puff stitch bag, which is actually one of my paid patterns that I gave for free to those who joined my group. For this puff stitch bag, I want to add my business tag and a wristlet. And I wanted to just show how I do that real quickly for those who have asked. So I will link below the provider of my business tags that I have here. That's, um, I get from a guy on Etsy and he has great service and does a great job um, getting it exactly how I want it. Um, and then you will also need, well you don't need it, but it's very helpful. I use what's called a sewing gauge and you can buy this at Walmart for like $1.50. It has a little lever on it that moves back and forth so that you can measure exactly the distance from your bag to the center to make sure that you get your tag centered. I also use the Coats Transparent Nylon Thread. I get this from Walmart, but you can get it from any craft supply store. It is um, just clear. It's, it's really great to sew on your tags because you can't see the stitches. Um, you'll also need some scissors. So the, the first thing I'll tell you is I wait until I'm done putting in the zippered lining for my bags before I add the tag. And the reason that I do that is because sometimes when you add the zipper and you're crocheting into the lip of the zipper, it shifts the center just a little bit. And because of that, don't particularly like that. Um, so I wait until after I've put the zipper in to add my business tag. So the first thing is we are going to measure from the sides and see it's off just a little so I will bring it in and measure again and see this is helpful if you want it to be in the center. So also note it's hard to see because this is variegated yarn, but I have five rounds here. And so I'm going to sew it to the third round because that's in the center. I've already threaded my needle, but I got a length of about 10 inches of this nylon thread and then I knotted it at the end. And the reason that I did, I know a lot of sewers do not knot their ends. The reason that I knotted it is because it is a plastic, basically a thin plastic and it is super wiry and just goes everywhere. So I try to help control it by knotting the ends. Okay, so I start on this side because I'm right-handed, but it doesn't really matter. So um, you're going to sew it to the, the layer of yarn, but not to the bag. And I usually do this about 10 stitches. Okay, so this is number 10. Now what I do is I go, and I hope you can see it, underneath the stitches and like through them, through the loop that I just created with all those stitches. And then I'm going to go back into the loop to tie it off. And I do that a couple of times because this thread is just so wild. <laughs> so I pull it this way and since it's clear, I'll show you, this is a loop that it's created and I'm gonna go back through that loop. And then on the last one, like this, going through the strands there, I'm gonna go through the loop and then I'm going to go back underneath my working thread. 
I would have shown you with, with real thread, but I didn't want to have to repeat this. <laughs> Sorry. I guess it's my laziness. And I'm going to do this 10 times as well. And the reason that I am counting them is because I'm a bit of a stickler. I want it to look the same on both sides. But because it's clear, it's not like anybody's gonna notice if you do a few extra stitches. Okay, so that's 10. And I'm going to go underneath and through the, all the loops I just created and then go back through the loop. And that just kind of brings them together. And I do that twice. It gets a little snug there. And then on the last time, I go through the loop. I go through the loop and then back through my working thread to, to knot it off totally. And then you can cut it to the quick then. Okay, so that's how I put my name tag on. And then for um, accessorizing your bag, um, this is the Hello Gorgeous from Red Heart Yarn. I got it from Walmart for a couple bucks and it is the color peacock and because it's the color peacock i have a couple of options that i think would look really great um, if you wanted to turn this into a wristlet i like to put my wristlet on the opposite side of the, the beaded tassel but you don't have to um, i have these resin bangles which are gorgeous this actually came from the company little windows little-windows.com they have a YouTube channel and she is phenomenal. The lady there is just so nice. And I've learned a lot from her. Her name is Fran. And she sent me these bangles to play with because I have started making my own bangles for the bangle bag, which I plan to do a tutorial on that next. Um, so I've made some bangles, but they are quite a bit bigger than this. But she made this one for me and I think it matches really, really well. So if I was going to use this bangle, I would sew it on to the side here um, with the monofilament cord that I tell you to get for the beaded tassel, um, which is this here. I get it from Walmart. It's just a tough sort of beading wire. Um, that is not stretchy and I would probably just go around and around and around it. Um, it is a little on the thicker side which is not my favorite. So um, what you could do in the future if you decided to use bangle bracelets would be to make your bag bigger and then what you could do would be use it like attach it to your bag like in the front and in the back and ha of course you wouldn't be able to put your name tag there but have little handles there and wouldn't that be so pretty to have these little handles on there um, the bangles that I have been making which these are just prototypes this is not I mean this is the size but I'm not selling these because I was practicing <laughs> but these are much bigger um, and you could just and they're thinner see you could just attach it to the side there and it would look really really good with that color and then I've also made some in gold um, eventually these will be on my website but right now like I said I'm learning these look like poop I would never sell this to a soul um, <laughs> but you could realistically once I um, or if you're if you dabble in resin yourself you could create the the bangle for the wristlet part um, on the side here and you would just attach it there um, also if you go to a craft store there are some of these you'd find them in the leather making area or in the macrame area and these are three inches in diameter here in the in the middle and they are the perfect 
size for a bangle, um, for a wristlet, because they're not overly big. Um, if you can tell that that's just right. So if you can find some like that size, I would highly recommend it. You could always crochet over the top of this um, for comfort and attach it that way, or you could just leave it like this. I have attached these just like they are to some um, bags and use them just like they are. Another thing that you could do, I got these from, I believe Walmart, it could have been the dollar store. These are huge, <laughs> same size as this, um, hair ties. And what you could do, they are a bit stretchy, but they're not super stretchy. I mean, if you put something extremely heavy in this bag, it would probably sag, but it's really sturdy. I haven't done it yet, but I have planned to crochet over the top of it and then cinch it right here, like maybe an inch in, and then attach it to the side of the bag as a wristlet. And that, that would be perfect. I think I got a ton of them for just a dollar or two. I got a whole bunch of them. <laughs> and um, also, it, at AC Moore, um, which by the way, I think most of them, if not all of them are closing, which really makes me sad. But they sell on their beaded, their bead aisle, they sell these strands of um, acrylic links. And so these come apart pretty easy. I'm not gonna show you because I've broken them before in my haste. <laughs> but they come apart and you can adjust the size and you can attach it to the, the side there and it makes a, a wristlet. It's a little fancier. I usually use those on my velvet bags. Um, and at Michael's, they have these wristlet bracelets. Um, I got this when they were 50% off, so I got it for $2, and it really dresses up a bag. And, and what I do, I mean, you're welcome to leave all this other stuff on because it would be really great to put your keys on it. Um, I suppose you could probably even attach it to, well, no, it's too thick. Um, I've never tried it this way, so I'm just kind of doing it on camera, but... You could probably attach it that way. If you were running to the mall or store or whatever, um, and you could put your keys on there and then carry it like that. It really is just simple. And they have some really pretty ones. Um, but what I usually do, honestly, is I take the, um, the keychain off and I keep this little tiny chain link on there and I sew it with the monofilament cord onto the bag. Um, and I also use these usually for my velvet bags because velvet is just dresses everything up. So um, I will give you one more um, way that you can make a wristlet for your crocheted bag. And this is the simplest <laughs> probably. And that is with yarn. Yay for yarn. You will need a five millimeter hook for this. So get your slip knot on your hook, leaving a lengthy tail, because we're gonna have to hide this later. And find on your bag the, the top of a puff. You don't really wanna go into the single crochets because they're not that sturdy. But if you could find the, the top of a puff, then go through that. And we're going to just slip stitch into the bag into the side there and pull it tight. Okay, and for me, this is what I do. I crochet a length of chain until I get to 12 inches. And the reason that I do that is because that is the perfect size for a wristlet. Now you're welcome to get your ruler out and measure, but 12 inches is just right for me. I have huge hands though, so really you might wanna get a tape measure out and measure for yourself. So I'm just going to crochet a chain, not too loosely, but not too tightly, because we're gonna go back into it. We're gonna actually work back into this chain a little bit. So just make a chain about 12 inches long. Okay, now try not to twist your chain and go back into the top of the stitch on the side there where you slip stitch to begin with. And we're gonna slip stitch again. Oops, sorry about that. We're gonna slip stitch again. 
And by the way, I decided to use navy because this will get dirty. Um, I could have used the color of the bag just fine. It would have been fine, but I kind of wanted to tie in the navy of the zipper. I'm kind of weird like that. I like to tie in different things. So that's why I use navy and I know it's dark. I hope you can see it. I'm sorry if you cannot. All right, now we are going to chain one and we're going to flip the chain to where it's not twisted. And we're gonna start slip stitching up that chain. Kind of loosely, you don't want to do it too tight. And the reason that I slip stitch on this chain instead of just leaving it a chain or instead of doing single crochets is because it is a sturdier stitch. You don't really want it to be stretchy at all because it's going to have weight on it with the stuff in the bag. Oh, and I meant to t tell you, what you could also do is if you have fishing wire or line, I don't know, it's probably called different things, the basically what you <laughs> put on your fishing pole to go fishing. If you have some of that, I have heard other makers say that they actually um, double up the fishing wire with the yarn and crochet them like with both strands held together and that cre creates a much stronger strap. I've heard other makers say that they do that for their purse straps because over time all yarn will stretch and if you are wanting it to really hold up then I highly recommend getting some fishing line and crocheting with that along with your yarn and that will really make it last a lot longer. And to be honest, I have not tried it yet because I keep forgetting to buy fishing line. My husband isn't a fisher, um, so I don't have any just laying around. But if any of you try it, tell me in the comments below how you like it because I would really like to know. It might provoke me to really try and remember. <laughs> So I'm almost to the end. All right, now I'm going to leave a lengthy tail and fasten off. And I'm going to use that lengthy tail to sew a part of this together. So you're gonna need a yarn needle and take that length of tail and what you're going to do is, without twisting the chain, make sure you're not twisted, sandwich that strap together. And we are going to sew about one inch of this together. And this is to just further reinforce it. So I went underneath and I'm going from top to bottom, then from bottom to top. I'm not doing a circular motion. That is, I'm not whip stitching, because to me, that's tacky looking on this. I've tried everything. <laughs> you don't wanna pull too tightly because it'll warp the shape. And then once you get about an inch over, you're gonna go back. This just further reinforces it. And if you're using the fishing wire, you, you, uh, you really should have a very, very sturdy wrist slip. Okay, so I'm gonna go and meet to the other side so that I can use this and we're gonna tie them together in a knot. There we are. All right, now you're gonna wanna take your end and weave it into down deep into the bag. Of course, you don't want to go through a puff because it's going to warp the shape of the puff. But weave it down deep. What I usually do, because wristlets are going to get so much wear and tear, I'm going to weave it to a dark area. So I'm weaving it to where there is some navy in here and it's towards the dark purple. And what I am going to do 
is take my needle and thread, my nylon thread, and I'm going to actually sew that tail down because I don't want it going anywhere. A lot of people use these wristlets inside their purse. They just shove it in there like a wallet. Because of that, it's gonna get beat up. So you, you want it to last. So I'm going to actually stick my needle through the tail and into the top of a, a stitch. Now, not the puff. You do not wanna mess with the puffs because it'll mess with the shape. So I'm going into that base there, into those, I guess a single crochet. If you've been making the puff stitch bag with me, you should know what I'm talking about. So I am sewing this tail down. And it doesn't have to be like elaborate. You don't have to go through it a bunch. Just enough to really secure it. That way, if they're slinging it around, <laughs> it's not going to come flying off. And I'm just going to do it. I, only, I think I only did three. And then I'm going to do the, the sewing knot that a lot of hand sewers use. So I'm going to go through that loop and then back through that loop and knot it off. Cut it down and I'm going to cut the tail off to the quick because it's secure and kind of just play with the puffs around it and poof them out so that it covers it up and if you didn't know it was there you ain't gonna know it <laughs> you're not gonna see it one day and I'm going to repeat the process on this side I'll probably weave it all the way down to this puff here and sew it down and doing so will also bring this in a little bit so that is how you can make one with yarn so I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial if you don't already subscribe to me please do and please give my video a thumbs up so that I can keep bringing you more tutorials thank you